there are two aspects in the mind no operator no operation no difference in these two in no director there is no direction so only operation is there nobody to manage that operation there is no operator there mukti moksham liberation is a natural state intellect keeps disturbing that liberation hi friends today i'm going to discuss about enlightenment and liberation what shri bhagavatayya tells us about enlightenment and liberation there are a lot of conceptions or rather misconceptions about enlightenment and liberation for example once a spiritual seeker had approached ayya and asked what time ayya generally sleeps in the night ayya said he sleeps generally around 10 pm that person was shocked and said how can a spiritual seeker sleep in the night as night is the time for seekers and that they should be meditating or doing penance etc the whole night those who seek enlightenment should not sleep at all he said generally enlightenment means you should do intense practices put lots of effort and you have to cross many mountains to attain that extraordinary enlightenment all spiritual paths show enlightenment as something exceptional exclusive and extraordinary another example once a person from usa called ayya and asked whether enlightenment should be attained before the age of 40 as after 40 it's very dangerous to attain enlightenment when asked the reason for that he said when you attain enlightenment it will be like a big thunder falling on your head so you need strength to bear that and after 40 you're not that strong isn't it he asked when you talk about enlightenment everybody talks about joyful ecstatic state when you do spiritual practices continuously and meditate continuously you reach that state this state lasts for few days or in some cases for few weeks also then it will go away and we will think that we have not reached that stage yet and so we will do more severe practices for ayya also it happened the same way and then he reached that joyful ecstatic state this state didn't go away and it stayed with ayya so ayya thought he got enlightenment he got what he searched for he attained what he needed to attain and so he completed his journey this state which lasted for few days stretched into few weeks and then extended into few months also and even crossed more than a year then it started disturbing his physical health his health started deteriorating ayya got many diagnostic test done too but nothing was wrong then he found that that ecstatic state was the cause and so he wanted to come out of it once he came out of it then only he could come to his normal self next question now he thought that ecstatic state was the peak to attain he had attained that too but that's not it so then what when you are in the peak state no problem affects you we all have seen how a drunkard acts he will even cry on seeing something or someone but that won't be tears of sorrow or suffering but there'll be tears of joy only similarly when you are in that ecstatic joyful state nothing will affect you even for ayya when he was in that state though his mother passed away at that time it didn't affect him everything was joy only intoxication due to liquor others can find out but this intoxication due to that ecstatic state others can't find out nothing will affect you even in puranas we have heard 
A sage will be doing penance. When Lord of Cupid strikes him with an arrow, it will fall on him as a flower garland only. Similarly, nothing will affect you. But when that itself became questionable, he came out of that. Then even a small pin pricks you and affects you. Small problems also affect you. People in spirituality said ecstatic state was the highest and nobody said it was not necessary or that he had to cross that too. But then one day a small problem affected Aya. Then he thought, how can this prom small problem affect him? Then he wanted to throw away everything. He thus concluded and let go of everything. Then his approach itself changed. After that only he understood or found out what is enlightenment. After that all problems got solved in another approach. After that also problems were there but he started taking them as games as something which he can face or encounter. Then what is enlightenment actually? Let's take the example of Buddha. Buddha also had travelled the same journey, undertook penance, meditation, etc. And so he also got many spiritual experiences. But then he found that they are of no use. And in a desperate state when he sat, at that state he got what he wanted to attain. Earlier state was different from the state he attained. After letting go of everything, after ignoring everything. Two different states. Earlier was a state where he was searching, but now there was nothing to search. He was stunned and he saw another aspect functioning within him. He called it Nirvana state. But when he told others, he said, desire is the cause of suffering. But then he didn't describe what he actually found out. What did Buddha find that day? What's the problem? Actually, all problems are in our mind only. If mind is okay, everything is okay. But how to my make this mind okay? None of us know this. So we set out to tackle or control our mind. Our full life goes on in this. We think if we attain enlightenment, then our mind will become okay. We know the problem is with the mind. So all of us are trying to set our mind right. How does the mind function? One person asked in a meeting, Aya, Aya, I become angry very soon. But I'm finding it difficult to control. Tell me a way to control my anger. He has two issues now. One is getting angry easily and next is controlling anger which he finds it difficult. Aya dealt it playfully. He said, you say controlling anger is difficult. You ask me how to control anger. I also agree controlling is difficult. And the next step you say, getting angry is easy. I have some question regarding that. If getting angry is easy, stay angry from morning till evening. It's easy only. You do the easy thing. Controlling only is difficult. You do the easy thing only. Show me staying angry from morning till evening. Aya said thus. All issues are like this only, centered in a small thing. If we are alright, everything will become alright. We think like this. If my pen falls down, only I have to put effort to pick it up. Only then I will get it back. So, for small things also, I have to put effort. Psychologically also, we apply this principle and try to set right ourselves, to keep ourselves right. We want to apply the same thing to our mind, to set our mind right. This is the root cause for everything. 
root cause for all our problems is this. Ayya and Buddha and all enlightened masters found out this only. What is that? Ayya, Buddha and all enlightened masters found out this only. What is that? We want to put effort and set our mind right. But in reality, there is nothing to do. If you let go, everything will be solved. We want to put effort and then win over. So, we keep putting effort. It looks as though we win, but again we lose. We think perseverance is the way and so we keep doing. Is there any difference between enlightenment and liberation? Many others and Ayya also thought that there was no difference between enlightenment and liberation. Ayya also didn't know the difference and thought both were same. Ayya thought attaining enlightenment is what is meant by liberation. But actually, enlightenment is different, liberation is different. Mukti, moksha or liberation is what we need to attain. That is the highest state. But in reality, it is our natural state. Our natural state itself is liberated state. Mukti is not a state to attain. But because we are not enlightened, we keep disturbing that liberated state. If we don't disturb, it's enough. Enlightenment is just a small finding. There is no work to do psychologically. So, let go of everything in psychological world. Coming to a conclusion that there is no work to do in all mind-related aspects, be it enlightenment, ignorance or liberation, etc. To attain there, there is no work to do. If you don't conclude this way, there is only endless struggle. As per our practices and efforts, we will get some experiences also. But we get deceived by those experiences. We think, wow, such amazing experience we've got, which nobody else has got. And so we continue going in the same path. We may even get enlightenment and liberation, etc. We think so. But actually, enlightenment is a very common thing. Psychologically, there is nothing to attain. If you get this, that's it. If you think there is something to attain, you will keep stirring it. If not, it will flow naturally. It will settle and become clear on its own. Nothing will stay there. It will settle on its own. It may take some time for water to settle. But for mind, even one second is more. In less than a second, changes keep happening. Everything changes on its own. Only we try to establish something and so confuse inside us. Mind's natural state is liberation. When some situation affects us, the impact of that reflects within us. We have many theories and philosophies to keep our mind in order and so we struggle to arrange our mind. Whichever, whichever philosophy or principle we try to apply, we are only struggling. There is nothing to apply. Only you need to understand that there is no work for us. So, stop our work on our mind. Nothing to drop also. Once you understand, it will go off on its own. See, we go inside a dark room. We see a rope and pick it up. But after lifting it, we realize that it's a snake and not a rope. Do we have to put effort to drop it? The moment we realize, we will drop immediately. We function in such a speed. Similarly, understanding is enough. We are fighting only where it's not necessary to do anything. This means we are fighting with ourselves. There is no work there. We need to understand this. We've had many experiences. We've lost many times. 
All these lessons we have to take and come to this conclusion. Once we come to this conclusion, then the natural movement or the natural operation takes place naturally. There is nothing artificial here. We didn't create this moment or operation. It's natural. It's not artificial. Only till enlightenment our work is there. In liberation our work is not there. All children are in that innocent natural state only. Only as intellect grows we try to shape, to design our mind and then struggle also. This designing or shaping is needed only for external world. You can design and establish in external world, but it doesn't apply for psychological world. In psychological world, there is nothing to do. We have to come to this intellectual conclusion. But the name enlightenment itself is extraordinary. If you say you are enlightened to others, they will mock or laugh at you. To such extent, this word enlightenment has disturbed us. But actually it's only an intellectual understanding. Nothing related to experiences. Nothing to attain with practices and effort. Simple understanding of what to do, what not to do. Where work is there, where work is not there. Where to put effort and where not to put effort. This simple understanding will let the mind function on its own. Whereas now we are trying to operate this mind. Now, say in a situation we get fear or anger. That comes on its own. We are not inviting this fear or anger. It comes without our knowledge. It happens on its own. We have no work there. But we have a standard set for us for ourselves. This is good. This is bad. This is right. This is wrong. We have lots of standards. We expect to add as per that standard. We expect to get experiences also as per this standard. We have expectations from enlightened people also. An enlightened person will have these experiences and not have these experiences. He will get only these emotions and not get these emotions. We have a timetable like this. On a daily basis, we keep checking whether we are acting according to that. This leads to psychological conflict. You have to come to a conclusion. After losing in all our efforts, many come to this conclusion. Even Aya for that matter lost everything got all experiences and when there was nothing more to do, when he didn't know what more to do, in that helpless state only, that change happened. For many masters like Buddha also, it happened like that. In some situation, without they being aware, without their knowledge only, they come to an understanding. There is no experiential understanding, only an intellectual calculation that, as far as the mind is concerned, no need to change anything. We are expecting a good state in the name of enlightenment. But actually, reason for all problems in is our expectation to be in a good state. That expectation is the cause of all problems. So, psychologically, as far as the mind aspect is concerned, no need for any change. Just give it to nature. We think, how can we let go of a bad or negative emotion? Only the one who understands can let go of that. I should be with a positive emotion only. If you think like that, then conflicts will be there. But if you understand, then you will not try to retain positive emotion nor will try to get rid of a negative emotion. You will give freedom to that. There is no other way than to wholeheartedly accept the way our mind operates. This simple understanding you need. Then you will keep yourself down. Good or bad is only for external world. Psychological world is natural. Nature is divine. 
natural operation or direction will be divine operation or direction. Not even for an ounce, artificiality will be there. Psychologically, there is nothing to attain. Intellect has good, bad, right, wrong, etc. You keep it for the external world. Spirituality, enlightenment, liberation, in this aspect, there is no work for intellect. Intellect will keep giving options, but for spirituality, no intellect and so no options. To understand this intellect's disability or deception is only enlightenment. Mind's function is not in our hands. It will go on its own. You just become part of the functioning of the mind. Else, you are different and function is different. There are two aspects in the mind. No operator, no operation. No difference in these two. There is no director, there is no direction. So only operation is there. Nobody to manage that operation. There is no operator there. Mukti, moksham, liberation is a natural state. Intellect keeps disturbing that liberation. All problems are due to that disturbance only. In liberation, all get solved. Nothing to do there. Say, water is stagnant. You keep your finger on that. Ripples will get formed. How to get rid of these ripples? Can you erase these ripples with your hand? No. More ripples only will get formed. If you let go, they will go away. They will settle on its own and become clear on its own. When you want to do something, it will go against you only. Nothing to do there. If you understand this, you will become part of that flow. So, as far as spirituality, enlightenment, mind, psychological world is concerned, understand that there is nothing to do from my side. This understanding will take care of all actions. We have some responsibility in worldly affairs, worldly matters. Many take sannyas from this world, but there is no need to stay away from worldly matters. We have so much to do in the external world. Only in psychological world, there is nothing to do. But we do the other way. No need to do anything in spirituality. This is true spirituality. Understanding spirituality and breaking free from spirituality is true spirituality. Thank you.